Thanks for joining us on Crime Watch. I'm Ivy Kano. An old crime is taking a new face in Port Harcourt. Baby factories may be on the rise once again. Now the indication came following the arrest of some members of a syndicate specialized in the kidnap and sell of babies. This particular crime has a long chain that involves kidnapping, sexual abuse, forced labor, amongst others. Investigation is currently ongoing to apprehend other members of the gang that are now on the run. These suspects were arrested for various alleged crimes by the different tactical units of the police in River State within the last three weeks. Several arms and ammunition were recovered from them. Expectedly, alleged kidnappers and arm robbers make up the majority of suspects in custody, though recent development indicates that there is a growing underground network that specializes in the sale of babies. Men of the 48 PMF on stop and search in Umerulu Nipping Point intercepted a bus carrying passengers from Potako to Uweri. On checking the bus, they saw a man who was identified as Chinedu Wachuku male, 23 years old with a five-month-old baby. On interrogation, he could not give a reasonable account of how he came about the child. On further interrogation, he told us that he dumped the, the mother in a pit and met away with the baby. Luckily, the woman survived. I'm a student in, Lava, uh, a student in University of Potako Theatre's department. These two insist that they are innocent. The police accuses them of kidnapping using fake wooden guns, despite their defense that the exhibits recovered from them are just props for movie productions. When I wanted to run this production, I wanted to start this production, I had to meet with the DPO. I went to meet with the DPO, Choba DPO, to ask him whether I can make use of a realistic gun. He said, no, he didn't grant me permission to make use of a realistic gun. So I had to contact my department. My department, the person that is always in charge of all those props, creating of guns and all those uh, fake guns to use in our department during stage performance. I contacted him. He said, I can actually use that. The police paraded a total of 25 suspects from whom 22 firearms were recovered. Also within the period under review, the police says eight victims of kidnapping were rescued. We are keeping close tabs on that story and away from kidnapping, let's talk human trafficking. Nigerians are crying for justice for one Falilat Musbaud connected with her family after spending years in captivity and forced labor. The 20-year-old was trafficked from Ogun State with a false promise of employment opportunities only to end up as a sex slave and house help. Ms. Falila's grandfather wants the full wrath of the law to be meted out on the 65-year-old man from Benin Republic who trafficked his granddaughter. The 20-year-old Falilat Musbaudin has worked as a house help in different parts of the country, including the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Before her ordeal, she was living with her grandfather in Abe Okutaogon State after the death of her father. In 2017, she decided to join his father's relative at Shaki, Oyo State, but left Abe Okuta without informing her guardian. Unfortunately, she exhausted the money on her at Igbora and ended up in the house of a suspected human trafficker from Benin Republic. Took her to his custody and um, started using her for um, all manner of things, uh, sending her to <coughs> sending her to um, do house help and all that. The lady who was uh, as at that time she was trafficked also got pregnant along the line. And um, uh, she's now with a baby. Mm -hmm. 
The suspect on his part claimed that he only assisted her and has been treating her as a member of his family. He told me that his, his father has died. He said, Nja uh, Pascal. Nja Pascal, we, we do together meeting of uh, consulate of Ibadan. But we know he died, but I don't know his daughters. But when he told me like that, I know sir, that it's my, my uh, daughters. He also explained why he refused to allow the victim to go with the man who claimed to be the father of a baby. I said, why you marry one girl with Bele? It's from Lagos, he come with Bele. We don't know, we don't know ever after this, uh, that his chief there, after they will come to, uh, with uh, the man who gave him Bele. The victim's grandfather on his part want the government to ensure that justice is served. I want them to do the uh, true justice on, on him. He will be handed over to uh, NAPTIP um, for prosecution. The commandant urged residents to desist from human trafficking, noting that ignorance is not an excuse. Well, just how sad these stories always are. Now an investigation is ongoing to fish out those responsible for the robbery incident at the Keja residence of the late M.K. Abiola in Lagos. His family members have now deserted the building for fear of being attacked again as they were attacked about the same time last year. The point of entry into the building for the robbers is a canal that has been overtaken by thick bush. Behind me is the Moshuda Biola Crescent residence of MKO where the robbery took place. The whole building has been deserted. We saw a, a particular woman that came here with a man. Uh, she says she's the wife of one of the domestic staff and since he resumed work, he hasn't returned as at this morning. This unattended canal covered with thick bush located behind the building we gathered was where the suspects came through. Having gained entry into the residence through the kitchen window, the suspects made straight to the apartment of Mrs. B.C. Abiola. Our crew gathered that the family was also robbed about the same time last year. Chairman of the Residents Association said the valley has been a source of worry to all residents. For two years now, we've been having this security challenge. Thieves have been invading the estate through the canal and uh, we've been trying our best to see what we can do to arrest this situation. All the buildings as you can see they are all fenced but <laughs> there's little or nothing we can do to stop this invasion of these miscreants. So we appeal to the government to please come to our rescue. On the canal the Commissioner of Police Hakim Adumosu said plans are on to ensure it no longer poses a worry to residents. I contacted the Lagos the Ministry of Environment because the environment is in charge of that canal. So for the clearing number one, and number two, so you call it Lagos State Task Force. It's called it moving in there. I've directed the task force to move in there. Because they have some little some I call them batchers. So which they leave them and all those ones will be taken care of. I tell you that owner there's no more place for them to stay. Commissioner said his men already have in their custody some members of a vigilance group and were investigating all the information on the voice note that raised alarm on the group. The killing of militia warlord Tawase Akwaza, popularly known as Ghana, should be cause for relief for Nigerians in the north central, but the truth about the actual circumstances leading to his death has now become the source of controversy. While the army says Ghana was killed in a gun battle in Benue, the state governor, Samuel Otom, disagrees. A bounty of 5 million naira was initially promised to anyone who could give a useful information that would lead to Tewase Akwaza, also known as Ghana's arrest in 2018. The 5 million naira bounty on his head went as high as 50 million for useful information that would lead to his apprehension who had been on the run for five years. 
and at the height of his notoriety, he was alleged to be responsible for about 1,300 killings at the spite of insecurity across Benue, Taraba, and Nasarawa states. The militia kingpin, who had enjoyed amnesty under Governor Tom's government, had resurfaced after being in hiding for four years to surrender to government for a second amnesty following appeals by community leaders of Sankara Intermediate Area. Many prominent sons of the Sankara area, including traditional leaders, clergymen and politicians, had gone to Kasinala local government area to receive the repentant militias, including Ghana. On their way to present them to the state government, they were rounded up by the military, which took away Ghana, while other repentant militias were allowed to proceed to Makodi. The Ukum, Logo and Kasinala took off from Kasinala to come to Makodi to present themselves with all the arms that were collected from these three local governments. They were apprehended at a roadblock in Masijay, in uh, Boko local government. Few hours later, the military, through the commander of the four special forces, Major General Ali Monde, confirmed the death of Tewasi Akwaza. We received strategic information on the movement of the dreaded bandit named Tuase Akwaza Agbadu, a.k.a. Ghana, along Besi Boko Makodi Road. Troops on Operation I Am Apartment 3 moved swiftly and mounted snap roadblocks along routes. At 1300 hours, there was a meeting engagement with the convoy of the dreaded bandit, a.k.a. Ghana, as is known. A shootout ensued and he was killed. In addition, 40 of Ghana's men have been captured in the operation and are currently under custody. Governor Tom said, though over 80 repentant youths from Castanala, 67 from Lugo, 25 from Ukun local government areas surrendered their arms and were allowed to convey to Makodi. Only 42 made it to the destination following the incident that led to the arrest of Ghana. This amnesty to you. But if for any reason you decide to go back again, we are not going to stop the security agencies from doing their work. And that story lays the background for our discussion segment on the program, but that will be after the break. A recent security advisory from the Nigerian Customs Service that terrorists are plotting to attack the federal capital territory and adjoining states has placed many Nigerians on edge. This is despite assurances from the military that they are on red alert to quell any threat to public order. This has again brought to the fore the growing concerns that war on terror is far from being won. I had a chat with Air Commodore Darlington Abdullahi retired and he outlined some of the challenges in the fight against terror. If you look at the nature of terrorism or insurgency, you know that it's not something that can be dealt with overnight. It's not. Um, we, in the first place, we have um, over the years, for, for decades, you know, failed to develop. When I say fail to develop, I'm talking about particular sections of the country, particular areas, you know, fail to develop in terms of infrastructure, human capital, and uh, whatever. So we have, um, it's like we are paying back now for the failures we have um, um, had for, for, for decades. Um, because in some parts of the country, you, uh, there, there, there are virtually no development. And the educational standard is, 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 is very low. Uh, uh, the, the human capital in particular, you know, that's affected by human security situation, has been so low, so bad, that uh, uh, people uh, uh, have been pushed into poverty for so long. And when you have this kind of situation, a lot of people begin to feel the absence of government, of governance, that is, they, are, they begin to wonder whether there is government at all, you know, I mean, we, we are, I mean within the, the area that they belong. And like, 
Martin Luther King Jr. said, when the people begin to feel that uh, they don't have a stake in, in, in any society, they consciously or unconsciously begin to destroy that society. Then such set of people can easily drift into uh, uh, be pulled over by criminals or in, in, in insurgents into their own uh, fold. And that is exactly what we have witnessed over the years. So Radicalization is the base, you know, on which uh, issues of uh, terrorism and insurgency are built. You know, uh, take for instance, in, in this country, it is on record that it is as far back as 1945 that the issue of radicalization started in this country. When uh, uh, Mohammed Marwa came from northern Cameroon into this country and started recruiting uh, young men and uh, women in, in, um, in, in the northern part of uh, the, the country. Now, uh, and radicalizing them, of course, you know, with um, extreme religious ideologies and so on. But uh, fortunately, at that time, he was discovered and uh, arrested and deported by our British colonial masters. He came back after independence and continued on, continued what, with what he was doing until the early 80s, when, when they struck as, as, as Metasini in, in certain uh, parts of the north, Kano, Meduguri, Bauchi, and, and, uh, and, uh, and so on, by which time they had built a mass a mass of uh, radicalized uh, uh, youth. Now, in the first place, why did we allow him to come back? Well, when, he come, when he came back, why was he not arrested when after having been deported earlier? So this radicalization has, has been with us for quite a long time. And that, the implication of this is that we now had a, have a mass of highly radicalized youth, and that is the reason that so many, as, as so many of them are being killed, all we get, all we, uh, more and more are joining because they, they are bound you know, in, 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 in the country. Uh, we, we, we saw what it was with the, the Almagiri uh, uh, situation, uh, particularly during the COVID-19 issue, when uh, they were being moved around the, uh, from one state to the other. These were people that were easily being, uh, that, that were easily uh, uh, pulled over to, by the terrorists and so on. The fact is, um, security is everybody's business. So when and anybody can have access to intelligence or information that can help the security agencies to do their job. But that does not mean that uh, when you get such an such an information, you put it in the public domain or allow it maybe um, knowingly or unknowingly to get to the public. It must be protected. I you know as uh, it is an intelligence information. I mean intelligence, so it must be protected given that can the, the highest class class of. Um, uh, security classification and pass to the appropriate authorities to move to deploy. I have had the we have had the uh, defense headquarters react to that information in terms of uh, being prepared to deal with the situation and so on. But this is more of a police uh, uh, thing, and that uh, the intelligence from the custom, information from the custom, should have gone as, as a highly classified uh, matter that will enable them to plan and um, and uh, uh, with the aim of. Uh, uh, intercepting some of these uh, people even before they get out of uh, uh, their domains to, to, to start carrying out uh, any attacks. But putting it in the public does not uh, help the situation as it is. Even though, yeah, the public deserves to know what is happening or what is going to happen to enable them prepare. But um, uh, at least at the point, it shouldn't. At this point, it shouldn't have come from the the source that we are seeing. What it should, I mean, like the letter itself written by the custom has, has been in the public domain for so long. And I wonder why that should be, just as you expressed as, as well. They should have gone to the appropriate intelligence authorities or the security agencies to enable them plan to deal with the situation as uh, it deserves. Uh, there are quite a lot uh, we have to do, uh, uh, first in terms of uh, uh, with the various agencies working as a team, as we're talking about interagency collaboration, to ensure that uh, all the agencies bring their expertise to bear on, uh, on the matters at, at hand. Um, we, we, have, we, we, we have a situation in which, um, like you also rightly pointed out, we have, we have for decades have 
uh, these uh, uh, porous borders, which uh, uh, through which various arms and uh, light, light uh, small arms and light weapons have been pouring into the country. And uh, not only the the, the borders, uh, the land borders, uh, even through the seas, you have seen them weapons and so on being brought in, in illicit weapons, brought in in container loads. I mean containers, and they're intercepted by some some of which were intercepted by the customs. Uh, some of them have also come in by air and so on. And yeah, this, this is a situation in which all the agencies concerned, in, uh, that is, whether it is custom, the police, the immigration, I mean, they have to, everybody has to get on board and do a proper uh, uh, job. Um, most importantly, the involvement of the armed forces in, in internal security operations is, uh, is is quite unnecessary. So the police has to be the civil police, the civil defense, and other agencies that work with them have to come together to think of how to deal with the internal security situations as much as possible and release the uh, uh, the armed forces to enhance uh, border security uh, as much as possible. If we have over um, over one thousand. Um, um, over 1,400 or there about uh, porous uh, points and so on. No, there's nothing wrong in uh, uh, deploying uh, various agencies to those areas to secure those uh, borders and make it impossible, make, or rather make it very difficult for such weapons to uh, begin to come in, in, in into the country. Now let's bring you some other crime news. An officer of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps and his counterpart with the Nigeria Police Force, all abducted from their Kaduna homes, have been murdered by their abductors. The security personnel were kidnapped last week at the Maraban Rido residences in Chikun local government area of the state, alongside their neighbor by yet-to-be-known persons. The civil defense officer had only a day before his abduction been awarded among other personnel for commitments to duty. Bulu Sanders' body, which was found at Sohun Gaia village along the Kaduna Abuja Highway, has been deposited at the Sabu General Hospital in the state capital, preparatory for burial. <music> Police operatives burst a syndicate who allegedly abducted and killed a middle-aged man in Okija. After an intensive manhunt through intelligence gathering, Police operatives attached to the Command Special Anti-Robbery Squad arrested a three-man syndicate who allegedly confessed to abducting and killing the victim, Henry Ockham, aged 34 years of Okija, in a Hiala local government area of Anambra State and subsequently buried him in a shallow grave. They took police operatives to a thick forest in Ihiala where the decomposing body of the victim was exhumed, recovered and taken to the mortuary for autopsy. The pump-action gun used by the suspect in perpetrating the heinous crime and the victim's phones were also recovered. They are to face prosecution. Two suspects are in custody of the Nigeria police for their involvement in a multi-million euro scam linked to the procurement of COVID-19 personal protective equipment. 50-year-old Babatunde Adesonya and 41-year-old Akinkpelu Hassan were arrested for allegedly defrauding a German company of 14.7 million euros. According to the force spokesman Frankenba, the suspects cloned the corporate website of ILBN Holdings in Holland to defraud a representative of German government. According to the force public relations officer, Mr. Mba says the suspects fraudulently obtained from the victim the sum of 1.5 million euro and another 880,000 euros at advanced payment for the supply of COVID-19 PPEs valued at 14.7 million euros. Investigation by Interpol Nigeria further revealed that Babatunde Adesoya received 490,000 euros through his Citibank London account and transferred same to an account domiciled with a leading commercial bank in Nigeria. Rape is one of the fastest rising violent crimes in Nigeria. Here are some tips to prevent rape. Avoid unsafe situations and strangers. If you are being followed, go to the nearest police station or any place with several people. Avoid walking alone. 
Walk with someone in areas where other people are near. Stay away from dark alleys, bushes, and entryways. Flee if you are in a potentially dangerous situation. Yell or scream to attract attention. You can carry a whistle that will make a loud noise. Engage in passive resistance by talking your way out of the situation or active resistance by reacting to startle your attacker. Don't allow a stranger inside your home use the telephone. Leave the outside lights on at night and in more than one room. And that's our program today. Thanks for watching. You can send in eyewitness pictures and videos to our email address and social media handles. It's coming up on your screen now. I'm Ivy Kano. I'll be back same time next week.